friends, and welcome back to the Woldenburn Podcast. It's been a few weeks since I last filmed for probably obvious reasons. <laughs> um, I am so glad that you are here today. This is a crafty podcast all about knitting and sewing and just the general creative hobbies that I love to get up to. My name is Emily, and I am coming to you from Tennessee in the United States, where I live with my husband and now our little baby boy. <laughs> so um, just a really quick note on that. My husband and I have decided to keep his name private, so I decided to come up with the code name of Baby Tam, which is after a couple of my favorite Red Rock characters, um, Rackety Tam McGrill from the Rackety Tam book and Tamalo de Formolo Tassock or Tamo from The Long Patrol. So this is baby Tam. He is snuggled up and asleep and hopefully he stays that way for the next bit so that I can get this podcast filmed. Um, yeah, he was born about three weeks ago and it was a lovely home birth. Um, I am planning to do a knit and chat video talking all about my pregnancy experience and my home birth experience. So if that's something you're interested in or if you have any questions or anything, um, leave those questions down below and I'll answer them. Um, but yeah, it was... <sighs> lovely. It was kind of intense. Um, more in I expected it to be intense, and it was more intense than I expected it to be, but I also expected it to be more intense than I expected, <laughs> which I hope makes some semblance of sense. Um, most people that I have talked to that have also have children have immediately known exactly what I was um, talking about. So a couple of things that are going to be changing with the podcast. I've decided that I'm going to try and do less editing to the podcast, um, cutting out less bits, cutting out um, pauses and things. I'm going to try and cut down on the amount of editing that I do so that I'm able to film more regularly because, to be honest, the editing takes way longer than the filming process does. <laughs> um, and especially with a new little baby to take care of, I'm just... I do not have as much time. Um, so that is going to be the main significant change to the podcast. Um, the other thing for today's episode in particular, I am just going to be talking about knitting and I actually have quite a bit to talk about. Um, so if that's what you're into, there's going to be a lot of knitting today. Um, I haven't really done much sewing. I've done a little bit. You can kind of see a dress there. Um, it was kind of a flop. so. I'm trying to figure out how to salvage that um, and then I've made a couple things like some um, nursing covers and things like that um, but I just really have not been I've not been doing much sewing it at all um, it's just it's so much more work to get everything set up or not set up but to get everything situated and sit down at my sewing machine rather than just picking up a knitting project and and particularly since baby has been born um, I have had less time than I kind of expected um, just because for one I'm getting all of the baby snuggles which definitely takes away from the knitting time um, and he was born a little bit smaller or quite a bit smaller than any of us expected so I have had to basically constantly be feeding him which if you know anything about nursing or breastfeeding your hands really can't be doing anything else while you are feeding the baby so it seems like that's kind of all I'm doing <laughs> is feeding him and trying to catch up on sleep. So um, I just don't have much sewing and um, so we're just going to talk about knitting today because I'm also hoping to keep it just a tad shorter. But again, every time that I say that I'm trying to keep it shorter, it always goes the same normal length. So, <laughs> but I'm going to try. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into the knitting. I have some new cast-ons. Um, I have a project I'm planning to frog, or I'm pretty sure I'm going to frog it. I'm still going back and forth on it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to frog it. Um, yeah, I have some socks, some sweaters, a baby blanket. Just kind of a good mix of things. Um, I kind of felt in a sort of a cast-on mood once I finished my So Faded sweater a couple weeks ago, or well, it's been longer than a couple weeks, a couple podcasts ago. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some socks really quickly. 
First off, I am in the process of knitting another pair of socks for my husband. Um, I am knitting it out of the Drops Fable, which is a lovely, um, just super wash wool sock yarn. 75% um, wool, 25% polymid, and I purchased this off of Etsy. He's wiggling a little bit. Let's hope he stays asleep. <laughs> I purchased it off of Etsy from Sundrop Studio, I believe, which I will link down below. Um, it was phenomenal, a really good price, and um, shipping was fairly quickly. It came from Lithuania, so it wasn't like instantaneous shipping. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, oh, oh. okay. 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 <laughs> My talking is probably disturbing him slightly. There you go, little buddy. Woo! <laughs> um, and it's just a good basic sock yarn. I've already knit one pair of socks out of, it was a different color, um, it was black. And um, it was a really, really enjoyable experience. I will probably be getting a lot of this for future socks. Um, and this particular colorway is a gray color, but the color number is 200. And I am working on just a basic pair of ribbed socks for my husband. Um, I've mentioned before that he um, is in need of more socks that he can wear um, to work and whatnot. And, um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> his, he has a lot of, um, all of his ready-to-wear socks are kind of wearing out. And so I decided that I'm going to try and keep up with making him hand-knit socks, um, to replace the ones that are sadly getting thrown away. Um, so this pair of gray socks I decided to make just a basic 2x2 two two rib. Um, so far I have done, I think I did 10 rows of 1x1 one one ribbing for the cuff. Then I did, I think, 5 rows of the 2x2 two two ribbing for just a little bit of a leg portion. Um, I've mentioned this before, both my husband and I really like shorty socks or ankle socks. Um, also, that's the other thing I need to do. I realized I need to slow down when I'm talking because it's not a race. Knitting is all about being cozy and calm and I can talk slower. <laughs> anyway, then I did a <coughs> Eye of the Partridge heel, which just looks so cool. Now that I have fixed my pearl stitches, it just looks so good. I do think that there is one spot here, you probably can kind of see it, where I accidentally did the pearl stitches the wrong way again, but it's on the heel of a sock. Nobody's going to be looking at it, especially at my husband's work. Like, nobody's going to care. It's going to be in his shoes. <laughs> and then I am just working away on the leg, and that one will be done. Um, and then I'll just have to make the second one, which is fine. No big deal. Yeah. Um... So I'm working on that sock and then this sock is actually just about to be a half finished object which funny enough um, I was actually knitting on this one while I was technically in very 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 early stages of labor. <laughs> um, but again as I said I will kind of talk about that oh my goodness in a separate video because I know a lot of people just aren't really interested in the whole pregnancy baby kids thing and so I like to be mindful of that what on earth <laughs> this is just so wonky okay here we go got that all tangled up gracious um, anyway like I said I will be talking about that in a future um, knit and chat video just because, yeah, not everybody's interested. Some people might be kind of grossed out by it. I am not one of those people, and I think that it can be quite helpful, um, to talk about it and talk about your experience and how things went and all of that. But, again, that's not for everybody. So, I am knitting a shorty sock for me, because I've made several pairs of socks for my husband, and I was like, okay, now it's my turn. I need some socks. <laughs> So again, this is just a basic shorty sock. Um, I think I did on this one, I think I did the same thing, 10 rows of one by one ribbing, then five rows, or no, it was probably 
four rows, or is it eight rows? Uh, <laughs> I was knitting on this when I was like at the final stages of being pregnant and just kind of wanted something fairly mindless to work on. I think it must have been eight rows because I'm doing the Hermione's Everyday Sock, which is a sock pattern by Erica Luder. And so I think I did two repeats of the pattern and it's a four row repeat. It's a free sock pattern on Ravelry and I highly recommend it. Um, the stitch pattern kind of gets a little bit lost because the yarn is like a self-patterning yarn. Um, and this is again, it's another of the Drops Fable. This one is in the colorway 162, which I think is Blue Sea, but I can't remember for sure. Um, and yeah, it's just such a pretty blue color with pops of other colors in it. I really like it. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, and this one, I say it's almost a half finished object because I literally just need to Kitchener stitch the toes off, but I was working on these in church and um, church was just about done and I didn't want to faff about with getting my needle and scissors out and all of that. So, and then I kind of lost my project bag. It was tucked elsewhere <laughs> um, and I didn't know where it was because again, later that day, I was in full on labor and having the baby, so my sock project bag was kind of not at the top of my priority list. <laughs> um, but I'm knitting both of those on US size 1 or 2.25 millimeter knitting needles, and... <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. There's an Amazon delivery truck and they just drove across the grass from our building to the next building. Okay. Um, anyway, back to the socks. Um, US size one, 2.25 millimeter double pointed needles, and, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's the funny thing about our particular building is delivery drivers get lost all the time because our buildings are not labeled, like the number is not very clear. Are you waking up? It's okay. Where'd your pacifier go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, anyway. And I knit pretty much all of my socks on a 56 stitch, um, or over 56 stitches. Oh. Oh. It's okay, though, buddy. Yeah? You want this? Here you go. Here you go. It's okay. Shh, 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 shh. One moment. <laughs> he seems like he's okay for a second, but we'll see. Um, anyway, I am planning to start trying out and try and use a US size zero, which is a two millimeter needle for socks because I have noticed and go up to either a 60 or a 64 stitch sock because I have noticed and I don't know if this is something that it's just always been that way and I've gotten pickier <laughs> or what um, but I I do know that my hand nut socks are definitely not as snug as like ready to wear socks um, and they they loosen a lot as I'm wearing them and I also feel like I've kind of realized that my knitting is pretty, I'm a pretty loose knitter and I don't know if it's always been that way and I'm just, like I said, just more aware of it now or what, I'm not sure, but I'm planning to try and go down to a US size zero for the next pair of socks and see how that works out. So stay tuned, I will keep you updated. Um, yeah, so... Those are my sock projects. Now we have all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. So first off, we're going to talk about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna talk about what I would probably classify as the most boring um, knitting project. Oh, I'm mid-row, of course I'm mid-row. Um, and that is this baby blanket that I'm working on. Um, and I'm knitting this out of just the Big Twist Value yarn, which is a yarn from Joann's. I think it's their, like, 
store brand yarn or something like that. Um, it has a 100% acrylic, worsted weight, and this is the color uh, dark teal? Something like that. It's teal something, I think. And I am just kind of making this up as I go. Um, I believe I talked about it last time, but um, I was not happy with a different baby blanket pattern I was going to try and use. I wanted something a little more mindless. And so I went through my knitting stitch dictionaries and found a stitch pattern that I wanted to use. And it is called the Granite Stitch. And I have modified it just slightly. I don't know how much of a difference it make it is making in the finished stitch pattern because I've not used this stitch pattern before. But it is a four row repeat. And on the third row, you go through all of the stitches and you're supposed to knit front purl in the back. I was like, I don't feel like messing with that. So I am just knitting front and back. Um, but yeah, I have made a decent amount of progress on it. I think last time I was still debating whether or not I was going to rip it out, but obviously I have not. Um, I added in my second skein, as you can kind of see here, and I am planning to just knit, knit, knit until I run out of yarn. Um, that is how big I am planning to make this blanket. Um, but yeah, again, there's no real rush to make this, um, to get this done, even though baby Tam is here. Um, it will be quite some time before he needs a warm and cozy hand knit blanket um, because it is it's really warm outside. Um, we're kind of out of the heat wave. We had a couple of gorgeous days right after he was a oh, gorgeous click shot um, right after he was born and I was able to just kind of sit by the open window while I was feeding him and it was magical. It just smelled like autumn and it kind of got me excited about fall time coming. Um, but anyway, back to the baby blanket. And like I said, this is about a worsted weight yarn and I'm knitting it on size eight needles, I think. Um, I can actually, since I have this, yeah, size eight. Um, if I were to do this again, I would go up, I think probably two needle sizes because I think that it would drape a bit better if it was a looser, fabric but I don't mind. <laughs> this is just like an easy knit on when I feel like it's sort of a project. And let me see here. Okay so I technically have three sweater projects to talk about. Um, one of them is the project that I'm thinking about frogging so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that one. I cast on the Anchor Sweater, which is a pattern by Petite Knits, and I'm not super far into it because I've just kind of been, this project has not been with all of the rest of my projects, so I've just worked on it here and there, and so there's not much to show for it. I am just on the second row of the yoke patterning, and I'm knitting this out of my hand-dyed yarn, and this is a, um, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon blend, and it is a fingering weight that I'm holding double to get kind of a DK weight. And I love the feel of the fabric. Um, I love how the yarn looks. I'm just not sure, I'm not convinced that it works super well for this pattern. And I don't, I don't for 100% know why. <laughs> But I just feel kind of conflicted about it. So I'm considering frogging this and potentially casting on instead a no frills sweater, also by Petite Knit. And I have a mustard colored yarn that's very similar to the mustard that's in this variegated. And I'm thinking about potentially doing some form of like striping on it. Um, like do the, the main the neckline ribbing and whatnot and then a portion of the yoke and then for the rest of the body do like some simple striping. I'm thinking about doing that but I'm I'm just I'm torn. I don't know why. I just I don't feel like this is like clicking if you will. It doesn't seem to have that like smooth, like this looks amazing, I love this project so much, that sort of a vibe. Um, 
because I'm really, I love the texture of holding or the feel of holding two strands of fingering weight together. It just makes such a spongy, squishy fabric. I love it so much, but I'm just not convinced that the color, whoops, well, that's gone now. I'm not convinced that the color is a good fit for this pattern, and I don't know why. So, we'll see. I might have frogged this and done something else with it by the next podcast episode. But, that is sweater number one, and I am knitting this on just some bamboo knitting needles. I think I got them from Joanne's. They're like the clover bamboo knitting needles, which I actually do really enjoy working with these. Um, on a US size six, yeah, six or four millimeter, and um, I was knitting the third size. So, there's that one. And then I am in the process of working on, I'm just briefly going to mention this one. I'm in the process of working on making a gauge swatch for the summer souffle pattern, which is designed, yeah, I lost a stitch, which is designed by Laura of the Knitting Pickle podcast. Um, there we go. I had to stop mid-row because little Bubby was hungry and was very insistent that he be fed. So I had to very quickly just check this down. <laughs> um, I made one gauge swatch already, but my gauge was pretty off. Um, it was too loose. I, th I was a whole stitch too big for the stitch gauge, um, which would make a big difference. Or was it... No, I think I was two stitches off. So it would have been like a half inch every like four inches or something. It was it was way too big um, or way too loose. So I went down two needle sizes. So I went from a size six to a size four. Um, and I'm going to see how that does. Um, and just really quickly, this yarn is just from Hobby Lobby. I got it when it was on like a clearance sale. And it is the Cotton at Lynn in the colorway Mauve. And it is 80% cotton and 20% linen. Um, and so it's like a DK weight. Yeah. So there's that. And now we come to the last two projects, which I'm very happy to talk about. I'm gonna pull my knitting, my knitting tote over here. Which again, I think I mentioned this last time, but oh man, I love this tote basket so much. It has been absolutely amazing. Um, to keep all of my knitting projects neat and tidy downstairs. It's lovely. Again, I think I'm on mid-row on like every single project, which is not normal for me. I'm usually very good about not stopping unless I'm at the end of a row, but I guess babies will do that to you. <laughs> so this is actually a work in progress that has kind of been in hibernation for quite some time. Um, if you have been watching my podcast since close to the beginning, you might recognize this. I talked about frogging it, and instead it just kind of sat and sat and sat and sat, and after I finished my So Faded sweater, I was like, ooh, actually I do really want that sweater. So I picked it back up and I've been working on it. And this is the Corbel sweater, which is a pattern designed by Claire Walls of Flossy Knits. And this was a pattern, I actually um, test knit this for her back when she originally released the pattern. And it was, I love the pattern. It's such, it's such an interesting one, um, interesting design construction, I guess. It, I hadn't done anything like it before. It's worked in pieces, so you work the front and the back separately, and then you seam them together, and then you um, knit the sleeves in the round. And it's worked from the bottom up too, so it was like all these new different constructions. Um, and I really liked it. I actually, I really want to knit a few more sweaters in pieces. I've heard people talk about they kind of hate doing that because they don't like the seaming, but I kind of like the part of like smaller, more bite-sized pieces of the sweater. So if you have any like sweater patterns that you've made that are in pieces that you really loved, I would really like to hear about it because I, I, I don't know, it's not a very common 
modern day sweater construction anymore. Usually it's the seamless top down, that sort of a vibe or bottom up, but seamless. Um, and yeah, I just, I want to make a few more sweaters that are knit in pieces, but anyway. So I am currently working on the back. And again, this is some of my hand dyed yarn. This is a DK. I believe this is also a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And it just has this lovely all over cable design on it. Um, and when I was originally knitting this pattern previously, um, it was when I figured out how to do cables without a cable needle because there's just, it's so many cables. And again, it's a pretty small cable, so it's not hard to do it without a cable needle. Cable needle. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, and it's just kind of in this like smoky, navy, gray, blue, which I think is going to be so versatile. I have a lot of blue in my wardrobe. I just have to check to make sure that he's not got his nose smooshed up against my chest and he can't breathe. <laughs> so if you're curious, that's why I keep just checking on his, his face position. Um, anyway, I have a lot of blue in my wardrobe, so I think that this will go with a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying working on it. I'm kind of at a pause at the moment because I need to get out my gill sweater that I made um, several months ago. Again, if you've watched all of my podcast episodes, you will have seen it before. Um, and I want to measure the length from the underarm point to the hem because since this is bottom up, it's a little bit harder to, you can't really try it on, especially since it especially since it is in pieces, you can't really try it on. So I'm just going to compare the measurements with that sweater, which fit, although I should try it on now that I'm done being pregnant, because obviously my body changed quite a bit from when I made that. Um, but anyway, I just need to do some measurements and see how much more I need to knit before I start doing the sleeve. I think a sleeve increases, decreases, something like that. Um, yeah. So, working on that and I'm having so much fun with it. I am really excited to have it done. So I'm both enjoying the process and I think I'm going to love the product. So the next one, this is a pattern I've gone back and forth on thinking about whether or not I wanted to knit it for years actually um, and I decided that I did um, especially after I was watching um, Holly of oh goodness of the Mystery Mouse Knits podcast and oh, careful buddy um, she was wearing her version of this pattern and I was just like oh yes I'm gonna try it even if it's a complete and total flop like I have thought about it I've owned the pattern for ages and I was like I'm just gonna I'm gonna try it. And that is the Tegna, Tegna sweater by Caitlin Hunter, which is that sweater. <laughs> um, and the reason I was torn about it was because it was so cropped and so oversized. And that's completely not my vibe. I like things to be a little more fitted and I like things to be cropped because I have a relatively short torso in comparison to the rest of my body. But, um, just the combination of the super cropped with the um, really oversized, I just didn't like that look. But I've seen a number of different versions of the pattern where they've actually been a bit more fitted. And it just looks so elegant because of all of the lace work it has at the bottom. Um, do you want this or not? Are you okay? Let's say he is a sleeping baby. Like once he's been fed and he's good to go, like little man is out. Yeah. You're okay. So I had a bit of fight with of a fight with this pattern um, right at the beginning. I had to cast it on. Well, I had cast it on and I had to rip it out three times because somehow or the other it got twisted every time and I have like never had an issue with it getting things twisted and like the first time it was twisted I had done like a good chunk of the lace at the bottom and um, then I realized that it was twisted and I was just like, 
<laughs> so I had to rip out the whole thing and there's like 300 plus stitches and it takes forever. Yeah. It's okay. Here, you want this? You want this now? Yeah. Um, and so I had to rip it out and so then I cast it on and again and I was very careful. I kept checking it and checking it to make sure that I hadn't twisted it. So, especially the second time, I do not know how it got twisted because I was just checking it so much so. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was checking it so much to make sure that I hadn't twisted it because I had gotten so frustrated when I'd done it the first time. And somehow or the other, it got twisted again. And so I had to rip it back out and redo it for a third time. And I was just like, you better not twist again. If this twists again, I may not be knitting this pattern right now because good grief. <laughs> um, but I didn't. The third time was the charm. It worked out. It was fine. Yeah. He's probably getting close to being hungry again. So I'm trying to hurry a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back to sleep. There we go. <laughs> anyway, so I finally got it to work, and here is where I'm at. Um, so yeah, I have made a decent amount of progress. I've got the entire lace portion done, which I am so glad about. Um, I was having to, it was pretty slow work because I was having to constantly refer to um, the instructions for the lace portion, but now I'm just in the stockinette section, which is just stockinette for like 10 inches or something. Um, and then there'll be some stuff for the neckline and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so I'm so glad to have that lace section done because it was really fun to knit. I really am excited to block this out and to see how it looks. But at the same time, like I said, I'm not really in the spot to want to have to constantly refer to a knitting pattern, especially with the limited amount of knitting time I have. Um, I want something really simple and mindless and not have to worry about it too much just to be able to sit down and knit. So I'm really glad to be in the stockinette section. I'm knitting this on a US size 3 needle needle. And this is my um, Chiagu, my one pair of Chiagu needles. I would love to get some more, but um, especially with a, with a new baby, um, any sort of crafting budget is, has shrunk significantly. So I'm gonna have to wait a while before I get any sort of Chiagu or Haya Haya needles or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm really, really happy to be trying out this pattern. And this is actually in a, um, oh goodness, do I have the label? I think I do. Oh yeah, I'm gonna squeal. So this is a, some yarn that I got years ago. Um, I believe it was in a knit crate. I got knit crate yarns for a few months. Um, and I think this was from a knit crate one. I had like a coupon code or something. So I was able to get like the fancy crate of yarn. Um, and so I did. And this is Fleece Artist, which is hand dyed in Nova Scotia. Um, this is the tree wool base, I believe, and it is a 70% super fine merino and a 30% tinsel. So it's a really interesting base. Um, I only had two skeins of it, so that's why um, I haven't used it. Is because I was having such a, it's a, such a different base, and I only have two skeins, and it's only 383 yards per skein. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping that I have enough to actually make this sweater. Um, I think I should, even if I have to like shorten the sleeves more so than they are. Um, but based off of the yardage amounts, I should have enough. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm super, super happy to be using this yarn and to get it out of my stash because like I said, it's been there for years and it's one of those yarns where it's like, it's a really nice and fancy yarn and I've wanted to use it, but I just didn't know what to use it on because it's such a different base. <laughs> Come on, little buddy. I'm almost done. I know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, so that is all of my knitting projects. I do still have my um, bias square blanket that I'm working on slowly. I haven't really worked on it in a bit because I've had the other blanket project that I'm working on. Um, and yeah, I have a few projects that I'm planning to cast on very soon. I actually, I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> I was a little worried my hand was going to look kind of creepy. I was dying some yarn today while he was napping earlier. Um, and I am planning to cast on some more projects because I'm just, <sighs> I'm excited about some stuff. Um, in the night, because I have to wake him up every two hours to feed him because again, he's small. So I have to make sure he's eating very regularly. Um, so in the night, I've just been watching knitting podcasts. I've been watching so many knitting podcasts and it's kind of bad because it's so inspiring and it's making me want to knit all of the things and there's so many new patterns and new designers that I'm finding and I just, I'll, I will leave links down below to um, some of the podcasts I've been watching. Um, I've been watching The Crafting Sparrow, Amanda, um, A Lovely Yarn, Amber, um, oh, what are the other ones? I found a new one that's Sugar Folk Handmade with Michaela. Oh, she's so cute and just, oh, I, I, I really like her. I just found her. <laughs> um, so there's that one. Uh, who else? There's been, there's been other new ones that I've found because I just keep going, like I'll run out of my subscriptions of the people that I already follow. I'll run out of new videos. So then I just go looking on YouTube trying to find other ones because it's the middle of the night and I'm exhausted and I'm trying to stay awake long enough to feed him. And so I'm just like scouring YouTube for more knitting podcasts. Um, but anyway, I'll leave some links down below to some, some of the ones that I've really been enjoying here recently. But they're dangerous to watch because they make such beautiful projects and it makes me want to buy all of the patterns and cast on all of the things. But um, I am going to be casting on a couple of different projects. I'm going to be making my... Okay, it's just my mom texting me. Um, I am going to be casting on a Oslo hat, which, a pattern, which is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I'm going to be making one of those for my dad for his birthday. Um, so his birthday is coming up here in about a week and a half, but my mom and my dad are actually going to be in town in a couple of weeks, so I'm just going to I have enough time. I have about three weeks before they're going to be here, um, so I have enough time to make that. Um, that's part of why I was dying yarn, so I'm hoping that the colorway came out the way that I wanted it to, but if not, I'll just dye another skein and it'll be for my dad's hat. Um, and then I have a test knit that I'm doing for Hannah Graham of Hannah, Hannah G Knits podcast. Um, I'll link her podcast down below. I love her podcast. Um, I am test knitting a, another sweater pattern, like a baby sweater pattern for my little baby. So I've got a figure out what yarn I'm going to use for that. It's got some color work on it, which I'm really excited about because I haven't actually done like any proper color work before. And I think that this would be the perfect tiny little project to kind of work on some color work. Um, so I've got to figure out yarn for that. I think I need to dye some for it, um, but I haven't completely decided yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing that one, and then I very likely may cast on another sweater project for me, but we'll see. I might try and make myself finish some of these other ones. Needless to say, I am feeling very inspired and well bitten by the knitting bug, which is kind of funny because I have probably less knitting time now than I have ever. <laughs> well, that's not true. When I was working full time, I definitely had less knitting time. It's just that right now because he's eating, needing to eat so regularly and also because I just, 
I love him so much and I love snuggling with him and he's just so cute and cozy when he's not fussy and angry at me because I haven't fed him. <laughs> um, I haven't fed him for like five minutes and he's just like, I need my food. Um, when he's like this, he's just so cute and snuggly and it's, it's amazing. I am just loving it so much, which is good because, you know, he's going to be here for a while. <laughs> um... But yeah, I think that's actually all that I have to talk about today. Um, yeah, that's all the, all the knitting stuff. And like I said, I'm not going to talk about the sewing stuff um, or anything else. It's just going to be knitting today. And it won't surprise me if that's kind of the way that it is for the next little bit. Um, just because I don't know how much sewing time I'll be able to squeeze in. Particularly since knitting is already hard enough to work on. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do any sewing for a bit, but yeah. So, how have you guys been? How have y'all been doing? I'm so glad to be back and filming, and um, it's just been a crazy kind of hectic few weeks. We had a bunch of family in town, and I'm just so excited to work out, like, I my new schedule like what's my new schedule going to be with a baby and taking care of him during the day and I really want to work on um, doing better about being a better wife and taking care of the home better um, I just feel like especially with pregnancy and in the first few months um, I had some um, COVID side effects and stuff which again I will talk about in another video um, that just made it so I was unwell and unable to eat in combination with pregnancy stuff um so it just feels like I've been not able to do all of the things that I want to do whether it's crafting or house cleaning or anything like that um and so I'm just so excited to figure out what my new schedule is going to be and um yeah to do better to do better about being um, a wife and a mom I'm just so looking forward to it, which is kind of a weird thing, but I think I've mentioned this before. Um, this is what I've always wanted to do my entire life. This is what I have aspired to, and now I'm here. It's kind of odd. <laughs> um, but anyway, enough blathering. Um, I hope that you all have been doing very well. Um, if you have any sort of knitting patterns that you're loving or um, sewing patterns or knitting podcasts or any sort of creative thing that you've been loving, I would love to hear about it. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and coming back. If you're a returning viewer um, or if you're a new viewer, I'm so glad that you stuck through the podcast episode today. It's a little bit different than normal, but um, I just so appreciate you being here. And um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that I might be looking at doing some hand-dyed yarn and just selling a very, very small amount of hand dyed yarn. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I would love it if you would let me know um, in a comment down below. I have a, a decent amount of just undyed fingering weight yarn and DK weight yarn that I'm thinking about just dyeing up a few colorways and trying to sell them so that then I can buy some more undyed yarn. Because um, I would love to do some little crafting things on the side to kind of supplement our income. Um, and just kind of be able to do something creative, but also to make a little bit of money. Um, that's kind of what I'm hoping to build this podcast into, is something where eventually, um, once I get over a thousand subscribers, I can get some monetization. Um, and just have a little bit of a side income to support my family and support my creative endeavors. Um, but yeah, so if you'd be interested in some hand-dyed yarn and whatnot, um, yeah, I would just love it if you'd let me know down below. Um, it would probably be through an Etsy shop, um, just something very low-key and casual. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end things here. Um, okay, it's not quite as late as I thought it was. It's only 2.30. It's very dark and overcast outside, so I was thinking it was a bit later. Um... My husband Micah gets home at about four and so there's some stuff I need to get done before he gets home because like I said I was dying yarn so downstairs is kind of it's kind of a mess. <laughs> um, but anyway yes. <sighs>
all of that to say, thank you so, so, so much for being here, for coming back and watching my videos and supporting the channel. I so appreciate you and I am so glad that you got to hang out and listen to me chit chat. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful day, that you're doing healthy, you're doing well, um, and that you are enjoying this last bit of summer um, and ready for autumn. I'm, I'm definitely getting to the point where I'm ready for autumn. Um, but yeah. Thank you for being here and I'll see you very soon on the next one. Bye!